On this brand new episode of Nightlife, we head all over Canada to get a behind the scenes look at some of your very own Golden Knights days with the cup. We head to British Columbia to visit with Shay Theodore. Should we have a rep counter for today? <laughs> okay, there's six. Backyard? Seven. Eight. 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 And we head to Quebec to chat with Con Smythe winner, Jonathan Marcheseau. Being young and like seeing it would have been really special for me. So I really wanted to give it an experience to the most kids I, I could there. Plus, we visit Mark Stone's home in Winnipeg to see what the captain's day with the cup looked like. I wish he was old enough to uh, to be able to probably remember this. It's also pretty cool to, to put her in the cup and get that picture uh, from such a young age. Guess we just gotta do it again, right? All of that and so many more memorable moments on this season's inaugural episode of Nightlife. Welcome into a brand new season of Nightlife. It's hard to believe hockey is back when it feels like just yesterday the Golden Knights were hoisting the Stanley Cup for the very first time on this ice, but there have been so many memorable moments packed into the few months since then, so let's relive them with the voice of our very own Gary Lawless. They are champions today, but they were misfits first. Can they be both at once? For the Golden Knights and their fans, this season is all about defending the Stanley Cup. To make that happen, these seemingly opposing dispositions must find a way to coexist. Revel in the swagger of being a champ, but underneath it all, remain true to misfit DNA. Make them doubt themselves right off the bat here. Complacency is the enemy. It can't be allowed to take root in the Golden Knights dressing room or in Las Vegas. Players must remain hungry, the fans too. There's no room for inflated egos and a sense of fulfillment in the pursuit of a follow-up title. The emptiness that first put VGK hands on the cup must be tapped into again. This is no time to feel satisfied. Reclamation and redemption is the way in Vegas. Undrafted Jonathan Marcheseau made his way to the NHL. Not belonging drove him and made him a player no one could ignore. Today, he has a Stanley Cup ring and a Conn Smythe trophy. Jack Eichel had the C stripped from his jersey in Buffalo and required groundbreaking surgery to get back on his path to glory. Now he's a champ. Boston fired Bruce Cassidy. Mark Stone had two back surgeries. Chandler Stevenson joined the Golden Knights in exchange for a late round pick. Two teams gave up on Brett Howden. William Carlson, Shea Theodore, Braden McNabb, William Carrier, and Marcheseau, all exposed in the expansion draft. Oh, what a feeling. And the fans of the Golden Knights? They were forever told they weren't good enough for Major League Sport. This team has been humbled. It made them burn hotter than others. Made them closer in their dressing room fused them to the community in Las Vegas. Lifting the cup took the whole city, and it was glorious. Lots has changed. The players in the city are champions. But to repeat, some things must stay the same. Want to do it again, Vegas? Get hungry. Be misfits once again. What an incredible run to a Stanley Cup championship. Bill Foley said Stanley Cup in six, and boy did the VGK deliver. It wasn't as easy as it sounds though. So many grueling, painstaking, and yet amazing moments from game one all the way to game 104. What better way to relive some of those moments from the playoff run than from the players themselves? First up, a critical moment in game four of the Stanley Cup final. It was my first goal in uh, a final. Great pass, Swiggy Stevenson scores! Chandler Stevenson, a minute 39 in. And then uh, to get a second one in the same game was pretty cool. Now Stone's hit. Stone fight, Stevenson scores! Now at that time, Chandler Stevenson 
has doubled down. It's 2-0 Vegas. Win 3-2, it was uh, kind of the nail in the coffin, it seemed like. The Knights would go up 3-1 in the series against Florida. And well, you know the rest. How about Jack Eichel stepping up against division rivals, the Edmonton Oilers? Game three in Edmonton. Ball down by Bouchard, allowing Eichel an entry. Eichel shoots and scores! 4-1 Vegas! Game five at home against Edmonton. Marcheseau, Martinez, and that shot back to the net. Eichel scores! I thought those were two of my better games in that series, and those are a few that come to mind. And of course, we can't forget about the paddle save heard around the world. Back in competitive. Dropping it off the turn drop, tip cap, and what a stop! I mean, it was a pretty cool save, but I felt like there's some other saves I made too that were great, and uh, it was it was fun. We stopped it with this paddle of his stick, an absolute wide open net, and Aiden Hill takes away a sure goal. Was there a, a save when you were growing up that you either maybe had a poster of on your wall, or you just remember thinking, "Oh my gosh, that was one of the coolest saves I've ever seen." And there was one uh, when Marc Andre Fleury made it. At the time when he was playing in Pittsburgh against Detroit, and the puck went to his blocker side, and he did like a double push, and then kind of threw his body over it and uh, made the shoulder save in the dying seconds to win the cup. I thought that one was pretty special. Do so. you ever think about the fact that there's, you know, kids all around Vegas, all around the hockey world that are your save is going to be that for them. Yeah, that's, uh, I, don't know, I haven't really thought of it like that, but that is pretty cool. And perhaps one of the most iconic moments of the entire run, Captain Mark Stone notches another feather in his cap, or a lot of them. Stone intercepts. This time he sends it down in a waffle and go into the goal. It's a hat trick. Mark Stone, the captain, makes it 8-3 Golden Knights. He was one of the dream of that stuff, right? Uh, for it to happen was pretty cool. Probably think about that more when I'm you know, 45, 50 years old, you know, retired from the game. One in the first, one in the second, and now a goal in the third period, sending the Knights to what will be a Stanley Cup championship. Time for our first break here on Nightlife. Coming up next, we head to Quebec, Montreal to visit with the Conn Smythe Award winner. We did what every hockey player in the world want to do. You want to win the Stanley Cup. It's the hardest trophy to get in the world, and uh, no one would take that from us this summer. We're winners. Keep it locked right here on Nightlife. Welcome back to Nightlife. I remember laying in bed the next morning after we won and everything at that point, it was, it was quiet, everything had settled and I'm just, I was just kind of realizing what we had just accomplished. That was a pretty vivid moment for me. Just as an older guy, you're able to maybe appreciate it a little bit more, having gone through it, able to sit back and kind of look at things. You know, even the night of, I just kind of took a moment to myself to just you know pause and look around a little bit. It wasn't during a party, it wasn't during the celebration, it wasn't anything monumental. It was just a routine kind of hour of my life where I was just sitting watching maybe a Netflix show or whatever it was and then just popped into my head and that's I think that's where it was just it was just kind of like whoa you know what I mean you, you, yeah. you just won this thing that you used to win on video games. Welcome back to the season debut of Nightlife after what was a short off season but it still had plenty of time for reflection and for some members of the Golden Knights the reality of being a Stanley Cup champion set in as soon as they lifted Lord Stanley on the ice here behind us. Others still can't believe it's true, but you better believe that it left Jonathan Marcheseau with memories that will last a lifetime. I'm Jonathan Marcheseau, and this is my Stanley Cup story. In their sixth National Hockey League season, the Vegas Golden Knights have won the Stanley Cup. I wanted to win the Stanley Cup so bad, and when that you win it, well, that's something that I'll be proud for the rest of my life, you know? Like, no one can ever take that away from me. Since year one, I always trust in the organization and the process of winning. And six years later, here we are. When did it set in that that dream came true? Probably two weeks after, two, three weeks after. When I got back home, my wife hired like a camera crew to follow me during the cup day. It hit me the most. How would you describe each of your kids' reaction? Obviously the two young ones are like, oh, like, oh, you get the trophy back and stuff like that. But my oldest, 
uh, and my daughter, they know what's happening, you know, like they know what's, uh, they'll remember that for the rest of their life. So that's uh, something I'm super proud of and I'm just seeing the eyes of my kids uh, looking at it and spending time with it. I think that was the best part. Where all did you take it on your cup day? I went to the children's hospital first. Uh, that was great. Probably the most important thing to do. I think, yeah, it was uh, life changing to bring it there, you know, like for, uh, for me and for them, I think I put a smile on their face today. I put myself in their shoes and being young and like seeing it would have been really special for me. So I really wanted to give the experience to the most kids I, I could there. And uh, it, was a, it was a good moment for sure. After I brought it to the arena where my old team, uh, the Quebec Ramparts, play it. And so it was fun to see some of my old trainers and like uh, some people that I worked with for a while while I was there. No, it was really good. It was super fun to see. You know, I just wanted to give a little bit of my time in my day. And uh, it was special to see how much uh, Golden Ice fans were there. And uh, it was a good feeling. How would you describe the moment when you saw your name on the cup for the first time? I think it was like Marty or somebody sent it like on the group and I was like, that's so cool. And I, yeah, it's, you know, when it's engraved, it's engraved. It was, yeah, just a great moment to see it for sure. What did you eat and drink out of it? I had a beer, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I live on a lake, so I brought it there and that's where I did my party with uh, my friends. And so you guys, uh, obviously some of my good buddies that won it before, uh, David Savard, Alex Chiaison, uh, Yanni Gord, uh, David Perron. It's awesome that they, they, they took the time and came and party with, uh, with me because uh, I partied enough when I was there so for, uh, for their party. So uh, uh, I'm pretty happy to see them all and obviously all uh, the people that are super important to me, my buddies uh, from back home and their loved ones. And, uh, it's memories that I will have for the rest of my life and my wife as well, so that's the most important. And uh, I was really looking forward to just spending time with them at the house a couple of hours, and uh, it was great to be there and uh, enjoying it. Time for another break here on Nightlife. Coming up next, we catch up with number 27. How is it? It's pretty good, huh? Quick, grab your favorite pint of ice cream, because Nightlife will be right back. Welcome back to Nightlife. Favorite thing that I ate or drank out of it. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that goes into it. Beer, rosé, wine. And there's like babies and, you know what and I mean? Baby yeah, you know what I mean? So I was like, whatever, I'll just put a Slurpee in it. Put some tequila in it. We were thinking of doing like an Eggs Benny breakfast out of it. Might have gotten a little messy. I asked uh, Bill, our, uh, the cup guy that was with us in the limo. I said, hey, is it is it cool if I put a you know Slurpee in it? And he's like, yeah, why not? We walk in with a Stanley Cup and we walk through and no one really knows what's going on. And I don't think any of my buddies thought I was gonna literally just put it under and just fill it right up. And then we started filling up like a big gulp cup and then poured the rest in there so there was enough. So I think everyone thought that was kind of cool. Welcome back to the first episode of this brand new season of Nightlife where we love to share fun facts like when we tell you that everything tastes better out of the Stanley Cup. That's why one of the first things players do is eat and drink out of it. But for Shea Theodore, it wasn't just about eating ice cream out of hockey's ultimate prize. I'm Shea Theodore, and this is my Stanley Cup story. Theodore with it once again. Steps away from Duclair. Theodore moves in, shoots, and scores! The puck handling, the skating, the maneuverability, and the finish. A clinic. Shea Theodore gives the Knights a 2 1 lead. Tell me about your cup day. What'd you do? I took it to the, uh, the local rink. We was able to, you know, meet some of the kids that, you know, are kind of growing up in the area and, you know, d took some pictures and signed some autographs and kind of showed the cup around and, you know, it was, it was fun to kind of do something like that in the community. One, two, three, Stanley Cup! If I look back when I was 7 to 12, growing up in Aldergrove, playing for Aldergrove minor hockey, you know, if there was a Stanley Cup champion who brought you know, the cup to the rink, I think that'd be pretty special. And I think, you know, that was my main motivation was to show the kids, you know, that you can come from anywhere. You don't have to play for the best team. Growing up, you know, it was a small association. You know, I played here until I was 14. You know, I didn't go to the, some of the big winter clubs that, 
you know, that some people said I should have went and played for. So it was special to bring it back and, and you know, enjoy it with, with the local community. This is my garage, or my, my parents' garage. Um, used to shoot endless amount of pucks um, into the door and whatnot. You know, it's cool to be back and kind of bringing the cup back here to a place that it seemed like I spent so many hours kind of working on my game and working on my shot. It's cool to be back. What am I doing? Okay, so I'm gonna... Okay, do you need a break? You're good? No, we're good. Okay, am I lifting it? Should we have a rep counter for today? <laughs> There's no words to describe it. Yeah. Emotional, exciting, and the people, the community itself, and once they heard Shay was here, it just opened up all the doors. Oh! How is it, bud? Get in there. Get in there. Get a scoop. I think I had about 100 people listed to come here, just friends, neighbors, because they helped us a lot. At one point, I think there was three or 400 in my house. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? When is that ever going to happen again? Okay, there's six. Backyard? Seven. Eight. Eight. <laughs> You know, seeing the look on their faces, you know, the fact that this is our the house I grew up in, you know, it's just it's just a normal house and, you know, pretty special to have the Stanley Cup, you know, in your living room. So it's not something that everyone can say that they've had and, um, you know, we had it today, so it's pretty special. One final break here on Nightlife. Coming up next, we sit down with the captain to relive some of the best moments from his offseason. I mean, I'm one of those nerds that watches these games over and over again, so I've been watching, you know, highlights and just, you know, tearing up sometimes uh, watching some of the stuff. Stay with us right here on Nightlife. Welcome back to this special edition of Nightlife. Mark Stone certainly doesn't hold back any emotions when he's on the ice. Off the ice? Well, he's about as calm and collected as it gets. There's a lot that goes into being the captain of an NHL hockey team. Leadership, patience, perseverance, the list goes on. And number 61 checks all the boxes. I'm Mark Stone and this is my Stanley Cup story. Best team! Yeah, I don't even know. Words can't describe it, right? Oh, well, I mean, it's kind of undis... You can't really describe what it is. Yeah, it's pure joy. And you know how happy your teammates are for each guy to, to be able to hoist it. You can just see uh, as you're passing it off, every time the guy lifts it up, everyone's celebrating. So um, it's just pure joy. It was one of the funnest weeks of my life. Made it all worth it, right? You, you grind, you grind, you grind. Then you look back at all the, the awesome moments in the run. Steven to the stop, score! I mean, I'm one of those nerds that watches these games over and over again, so I've been watching, you know, highlights and just, you know, tearing up sometimes uh, watching some of the stuff. Stone walking out of the scores! I mean, I've watched Winnipeg games. <laughs> Stone up high to Stevenson, score! I watched. Uh, Marcy's hat trick. It's a natural hat trick. I watch everything. I just, I love it. When it was over, I wanted to do it again. So it's, uh, that's probably why I'm watching it because I just miss it. You know, you got to give it back, right? It's not like one of those trophies that you get to keep. So trying to spend as much time with it be a little bit selfish. Went to a couple of local spots, local rink where I grew up uh, learning to play. Mark started here with Mum and Tot skate. He would go to kindergarten in the morning and we'd be skating in the afternoon. Yeah, it was awesome. And there's a lot of uh, you know youth kids that are doing uh, starting that path. So, uh, but yeah, that whole rink is, hasn't changed much, but it's still in amazing shape. I was actually super impressed with how, how well they maintained it. You know, for me, it was, it was seeing like Dustin Boyd and you know Jonathan Taves make the NHL, like seeing them do it. So um, to have that experience uh, of a guy who you know kind of went through that path, same path, it gives kids the uh, you know kind of a mindset that they they can make it through. I went to my uh, childhood house. Me and my brother never lived anywhere else. Uh, it was the house we grew up in. Everyone was pretty thrilled to see it, for sure. My nephews, they were pretty uh, taken back by it, for sure. They didn't touch it, they were making sure they still got a chance to win it. Looking at the names on the cup with friends and family, seeing their reactions to seeing like some of the names, like it's Gretzky, Crosby, you get a pretty good kick out of it. Because then you just see 
your names with those names, right? So it's pretty sweet. I mean, my dad, he cares so much about my, my, my brother and my career, so he had a smile on his face all, the whole day, and um, he was making sure he was always beside it. It was great. Hey, Mom. I spent I don't know how many nights with, uh, you know, the parents out there snow blowing <laughs> the outdoor rinks for the kids for the next day. A lot of hard work they put in, whether my dad working, you know, traveling, make a few extra bucks to put me and my brother through, and my mom driving me and my brother to practice every day, so uh, it was all worth it for them. The, the joy, I, don't think I, I took, don't think I took my smile off my face for uh, quite some time. You know, just kept a uh, new thing to new thing, right? People always say, like, oh, you probably heard this done. Uh, congratulations, but that doesn't get old, right? So um, it was pretty awesome. Well, that does it for this episode of Nightlife. By this time next week, regular season hockey will be back and with a new banner hanging here at the Fortress. Until then, we leave you with some of the most memorable moments from the best off season. Get ready to lift up off the ground.